I'm at a supermarket in Hong Kong and the shelves are empty. At some stores, they've started limiting how much you can buy of staples like canned food or toilet paper. Panic buying is just one way people in Hong Kong have reacted as the government has put in draconian restrictions to control the fast-spreading Omicron variant. For about two years, the city largely shut out COVID-19, but it has been fighting a record surge in cases that's overwhelmed hospitals. A low vaccination rate among the elderly has also driven its death rate to the highest in the world. So here's how everyday life in Hong Kong has changed and why many are rushing to leave Asia's global hub. Here in the city, daily life has become complicated, forcing many to re-evaluate Hong Kong as home. Vaccine passports are now required to get around the city, and the unvaccinated can't shop in supermarkets and malls. Summer break for students started earlier in March instead of July because the government closed schools so they could be converted into testing and isolation centres. Gyms are shut too and people can't eat out after 6pm, which has hurt a lot of businesses. This is Hong Kong's central business district. Around lunchtime, restaurants used to be busy with bankers and lawyers, but these days it's pretty quiet and a lot of restaurants and stores have had to shut. Government resources have also been pulled to battle the outbreak. Authorities have been quickly building temporary hospitals and massive isolation sites. There's also a dedicated taxi fleet to ferry the sick to clinics. But some government proposals, which have been integral to China's ability to quickly tame COVID spikes, have sparked panic among residents. In late February, local health authorities said the government couldn't rule out whether to impose a citywide lockdown to test the entire population. Fearing the worst, residents scramble to stock up on everything from toiletries to food, leaving many store shelves empty. A few days later, the city's chief executive said there were no plans for a wholesale lockdown. Instead, she said the government's priority would be reducing the number of deaths and severe illnesses. But the government's messaging hasn't been enough to convince many residents to stay. This is Central Station. It used to be one of Hong Kong's busiest metro stops. A few months ago, it was bustling, and this emptiness now is just one sign of the sheer number of people the city is losing. According to immigration data, nearly 69,000 more Hong Kong residents have left the city than arrived this year, with almost 80% of those leaving in February as the city's pandemic controls kicked into full gear. Hong Kong officials have called for calm and reassured residents there would be enough supplies of food and essentials. But as pressure from business groups has mounted, authorities in late March said the city would scrap flight ban from some countries and cut quarantine for returning residents from 14 days to seven. The government also said it would relax some social distancing rules from April. But China is also facing its biggest outbreak since the start of the pandemic, and authorities there have kicked into action by ordering millions to stay home and restricting travel. However, Chinese President Xi Jinping has vowed to reduce the impact of those measures on the economy and on people's lives. Health authorities have also said that patients with no symptoms or mild ones should go to isolation facilities, freeing up space in hospitals. It's a small step in easing restrictions, but as long as Hong Kong remains aligned with China's policies, life in the city won't return to normal until the number of cases are under control.